So your last name, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Tumin Baeva. Hey, welcome to Data Crunch. Now today we got a special guest uh, here who I think everyone, most of the people in the Malaysian data science scene would have seen her and know her, uh, which is Dara, okay? I'll let her to do the introduction herself. So maybe Dara, first of all, let us know who are you and what you do. Okay, sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for such an uh, eager introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um, okay, uh, my name is Dara. Uh, I'm coming from Kazakhstan and I did study here for three years in Asia Pacific University and then started working at Seek Asia as a software engineer. And after attending Data Science Bootcamp, I decided to move on as a data scientist and my company did support me in that and now I'm finally becoming a data scientist officially. Okay. So your last name, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Tumin Baeva. Okay, what does it mean in Kazakhstan language? Uh, it's actually like uh, just a name of the clan kind of thing. Okay. So you don't really have like official meaning for okay. that. I so, did so kind of Google for that. So pretty much like, like yeah. uh, Chinese surname. So yes. It, it represents. Yes. Uh, so for my name, it actually means unique. Unique. In my country, okay. Yeah. So Dara means unique. Yeah. Ah, okay. So uh, maybe for the audience, right? First, first thing first, they, they all want to know uh, what motivates you to become a data scientist? Okay, uh, <laughs> that's a very tricky one because <laughs> I did try a lot actually. Yeah. I did try things like virtual reality, things like IoT, things like you know mobile development and all that. So the cool stuff that you try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. But uh, one thing that strike among all uh, as a like data science, machine learning, and all that, yeah. it was challenging. Yeah. So I'm not saying that all the technologies I've yeah, tried yeah. is not hard. I'm just saying that they're not challenging enough for me to go on with because okay. machine learning is very like you know open topic there are many things to explore yeah. but in mobile you see like in a f probably in the next few years it's going to it's going to be very automated yeah. it's like you don't even need a programmer to do that yeah so yeah in that sense data science kind of lead me to that i think most of most of the things that you mentioned for example like vr or mobile applications they are, they are more like the tools and eventually yes. they'll, they'll be commoditized and become a utility yeah, tools right exactly. yeah but machine learning where you can see will be applied into almost any industry that yeah. you can think of banking insurance yeah. finance right okay yep. now uh maybe tell us a little bit more about your your day-to-day -day job and mm. then uh, yeah like day data scientist job and usually like do you work in the team or do you work, in, uh, work alone and the types of the nature of the projects that you're handling mm. well uh i don't know whether some companies it's actually quite unique in my company to be honest yeah. we're practicing mobbing if you're aware of Which mobbing mobbing yeah yeah so basically it's like team to team a uh, team of two or probably three people yeah. coming up together and then one is driving one is navigating one is observing probably like the team is like that so yeah. Uh, it was kind of new for me when I joined data team because I was like coming from software engineer background where you kind of most of the time work alone yeah. and joining like someone else in navigating and driving it was kind of challenging at the beginning but since like four months or five months passed since I joined that team it was kind of useful to be honest like when someone else is telling you what's your mistake, what could be improved, what could not, it's very useful. So how is it different from, I mean, you, you must have experienced uh, agile programming uh, or scrum type of meetings, mm. right? So how, how is it different from that? Well, uh, the only difference I would say is that it kind of progress faster in a way. Faster. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, you're losing in terms of like individuality, I would say. Okay. But there, there are pros and cons, basically. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, as a, as a software engineers or coders, even though we do pair programming, but ended up you're still working alone, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> like <laughs> 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 pair programming. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why they call pair programming, but ended up it's like, yeah. Yeah, you're going to work alone anyways. <laughs> yeah, we tried that. It, it turned out like yeah. that as well. Okay, so yeah, we are we are, we are very good at naming variables yeah. but when it comes to methodology, I don't ask yeah. us. Okay, so what is your, your favorite part about being a, a data scientist? Um, modeling. <laughs> modeling. Okay, so uh, for the audience that don't know, right, modeling <laughs> is the part where we do the machine learning and then we build all the fancy models. Yeah. But, uh, what makes it your, your most favorite part? Well, because it's when you actually it all actually makes sense you know like 
uh, at the beginning you're struggling to understand the data, struggling to understand how exactly you're going to come up with this result. Yeah. But when it all already comes to modeling, you kind of feel it, you kind of know it that this is the result I'm getting. But so. don't you get like don't you get frustrated when the model does not perform? <laughs> I get frustrated, but you know that's where I like it as well because that's, that's where the challenges come. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Then, then for example, like uh, so, y most of the projects that you're handling, right? Are they more focusing on uh, improving the accuracy or what? What type of your your goal in your modeling process? Yeah. So basically, we do define baseline. We do define yeah. thresholds for our modeling. So at the end of the day, we our aim is to beat those. Uh, target. So basically, yep. let's say it's supposed to be more than sixty percent. So we have to beat that target. Okay. Yeah. So one thing that I always tell our audience is that uh, fancy, uh, clean data, okay, or high quality data always beats fancy models and yeah, algorithms, that's true. right? Okay. So I want to hear from you. Is that is that true? That's true. That's, <laughs> that's, that's true. true. Okay. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely true. That's definitely <laughs> true. Okay. For those of you who are watching, that's definitely true. Okay. Now, yeah. now read this again. High quality data always beat fancy algorithms. Yeah? <laughs> yes. And I came across this uh, Data Science 360 um, under the recommendation of a friend. So I basically I, I, I took up this course because uh, it was one of the few courses that actually teach data science using Python, uh, where I researched a lot uh, in the market that were taught not using Python but uh, programming language R. I found it very interesting. Because uh, mainly because uh, I didn't expect it to be, uh, I didn't expect the trainers to be so, uh, so, so hands-on and you know, um, very. I would say they are very familiar with their subject matter. So in terms of that, uh, which one is your favorite? Name maybe one or two favorite algorithms or models. Uh, GBT definitely okay, because GBT. it beats all the time all the yeah, other models. It works in your your company. Your team yeah, the yeah, yeah. And then I guess linear regression. Linear regression. Yeah. yeah. So linear regression in in data science terms is is pretty much one of the most fundamental. Yeah. And the e yeah, that's easier, what I like e Easiest it. to learn, easiest to implement, mm. easy to interpret and explain the yeah, results and, to. Yeah. And there are cases where it helps. Like there are very. You, like easy to build the model and then yeah. it helps c yeah. comes in handy. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, unless it's needed, you don't really need to go deep learning. Yes, yeah. TensorFlow, exactly. etc. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now here's the tricky question: What is your least favorite part when it comes to data science? Uh, wow. <laughs> 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 okay. Hard question. Um, like honestly speaking, it, it it did strike me even in software engineering in any other yeah. part is planning. Planning, okay. Yeah. Not not cleaning data. Not really. No comment, commenting. Comments, I would say second or third. Yeah. <laughs> Writing documentation. No. Okay. It's planning. So, so why is planning becomes your your least favorite? I mean, I I, I understand that because <laughs> as a programmer, we just want to dive in and yeah. write write things, right? Especially yeah. we are the B type data scientists who build things, and then we just want to see our our result, uh, yeah, yeah our result as soon as possible. Yep. Yeah. Sit down, drafting, planning. But apart from that, what why is that your, your least favorite? Well, I think in startup environment, I would pretty much like it, but I'm in corporate. So the time it takes to make a decision is quite slow. Slow, okay. And I don't really see the reasoning behind as much, I would yeah. say, as a probably youngster, probably like whatever you call it. But yeah. for me, it takes too much time to make one decision. One okay. small decision. Okay, so th there's no good or bad because yeah. we are comparing Definitely. between startups and corporates. Yes. but. We we sort of like agree that in corporates we to us it's kind of like we spend a bit too much time in terms of planning, right? So so I would say the uh, even though we are not criticizing on the time, but the planning process might be slightly longer, yes, and more complex compared yes. to where especially where we are in startup. Yeah, especially when there are too many team members in the team, then they are com like arguing about one certain thing for too yeah. long. It keeps dragging and dragging, and yeah. that's where it comes to the fact like. What what are we arguing about? Yeah. <laughs> when it's all about like making, bringing the value, bringing yeah. the results. Yeah. Okay. So so this part we can air it. Yeah? <laughs> 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 okay. So uh, oh, here's an interesting one. So there are big companies that you know they claim that they spend a lot of time and resources in data science, and but 
at the same time, we hear a lot of companies say that, hey, you know, they always come to us, say, we got a lot of data, but we don't know what to do with data. Or before you join the company, you must have gone to some data science competitions or Kaggle, they say, like, this mm. is the data, tell me what to do with it, right? Mm. So, and then, but we have, uh, on the other hand, we have tech startups who are very good at data science at the very beginning, at, at least that's what we, they should be. Mm. So, why do you think uh, this gap happens? Meaning that why uh, startup or established companies, corporates, they are relatively bad at data analysis? Oh, that's a kind of like tricky one because it all depends on this situation in the use case. But I would say probably because of the amount of data they are dealing with. Like let's say for the corporate, there are millions of data. Yeah, that too much data. Too much data. That's one thing. And then the expertise is all about like you know in corporates, people are coming and going. Yeah. So whenever the come and go goes, the, there are peop new people coming into the legacy systems, and legacy system, systems are not hard, are very hard to deal with at the beginning. So, so we, uh, in my case, so I usually f encounter the cases like they have data silos, meaning mm -hmm. that you have many different existing legacy systems yeah. from other vendors, yes. and then even within the same companies, they probably like you said, right? They don't know who are the data owners. Mm -hmm. The people come and go, yep, yeah, exactly. and then they build different systems, I still right? Face it. <laughs> yeah, you still face the same yeah. problems. Right? In in your experience, do they use different uh, database systems like SQL, MySQL, Postgres, and Oracle, mm. or yeah. it's just different designs and stuff? Yeah, uh, to be honest, right? Like, uh, if you know the nature of Job Street and all that, like CKJ is owning that, so we have like not only Job Street but Jobs DB and yes. Hong Kong and like Jora and all that, so. We do face the challenge of having different structured data sets everywhere. Yeah. And whenever we apply this new feature to one particular platform, it's not going to go the same way as the other. So yeah. we have to rebuild it again, and it's time consuming. Yeah. Okay. So it's mostly on tweaking yes. whatever it is. Yeah. To, so to whatever fit. you build is not going to be able to fit yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a good point, yeah? yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, what, is, what is one thing, okay, now data scientists is at least portrayed by media as we are the, the, the sexiest uh, <laughs> unicorn in the 21st yep. century, right? Okay, so what is that's the... That's true. <laughs> is, yeah, so, so the question is, what, what is, is that true? And what is the one thing that you wish people to know about us that's really true? And what is the one thing that you wish people to know that that's not true? Yeah, okay. I think one thing is true is that you never stop learning. There is always like, you know, a lot of math involved, a lot yeah. of knowledge breakdown, breakdown. So in terms of like challenges that you face the day to day basis in terms of like knowledge gaps. Yes, okay. it is true. But comparing to like, you know, uh, all these high sci-fi movies and all that about AI conquering the world. No, it's not. <laughs> no, no, sci-fi movie is all about UI, okay? Sci-fi yeah, movie yeah. is all about UI, <laughs> the cool user interface that you touch. And yeah. No, sci-fi movie is not about AI, it's all about UI, yes. okay? Now, so, so uh, in order to summarize, what's the one thing that people, the misconception about data scientists, mm. apart from that? Yeah. More well, technical. another thing is uh, they think that it's uh, really you know cool and all that, but at the end of the day, you'll come to struggle with like chunks of data that is not clean that you still have to clean yeah. that you still have to go through the data engineering processing. That is one part of misconception that people think that they will straight away jump to the modeling. Yeah, yeah, without yeah. getting to hands dirty with the data. Yeah, in yeah. Hands. So, so I think one common misconception is. Yeah. I think the myth is that data scientists do, you, we use the word struggle, right? We are, we are still doing our job. And yeah. I think that's the part that it makes us, it makes the job challenging. And then that is also the thing that makes us sexy, right? Yeah. Okay, now uh, we reach to the part where commercial break, all right? So uh, take a quick break and then we'll come back in the next episode. We'll talk about uh, the other part of Dara's career and also what is her point of view when it comes to uh, a female in terms of uh, as lead also we are a strong supporter of women in data science so we'll talk about the different type of movements and how we can grow the community together. Alright, stay tuned. <laughs>